Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvellously well. At NAMM this year, we met up with a company called Music Hack, and they have a plugin called Master Plan. And Master Plan is, well, probably as you might guess, something you would use on your master bus. And our good friend, Joe Carroll, has been using it for quite some time. And he's actually, on the second part of this video, going to take you through using the plugin. And I am going to dive in myself first and take three or four different mixes and just see what it's like on a master bus. These songs are all very, very different. So it's going to have a completely different experience each time. When I heard it at NAMM, I was very impressed. And my usual fake mastering, for instance, is to take compression, EQ, clipping and limiting and master it quite aggressively with different plugins depending on the track. If I want it to be loud and punchy and modern, then I go aggressive. And if I want it to be open and beautiful, I might use some you know, analog -y emulation compression and then gentle EQ, something Poltec-y and all these different kinds of things. Now, what Master Plan is claiming to do, and frankly did seem to work at the show, was do all of those things. So the first track we're going to have is Bootstraps 45. This is a track I mixed that they recorded live and there's bleed all over the place. So let's drop somewhere in the middle and let's just see what this thing can do. So first things first, if I go a little bit later on in the song, it's, you can see and hear it's not mixed that aggressively. So I mixed it on an SSL, didn't go too slamming. Let's just see if we can bring it up without it clipping. I'm, I'm going nuts on the wide. I don't usually use any kind of widening whatsoever, but I'm gonna try it one more time. There's not a huge amount of low end going on in this, and the bass is like doom, 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 as you can hear. And it's, it, it's quite controlled. It's not bomb, 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 bomb. It's short, staccato ish kind of lines. So I'm actually getting away with boosting quite a lot more low end than I would anticipate. I'm going to hit some of these buttons down here and see what they do. So thick. Okay, that seems to be gluing together some of the bass, some of the low mids of the bass with the low mids of the guitars and thickening it, dare I say. It's actually kind of nice. I'm gonna take that off and let's play with the clean. I think there'll be other tracks that might demonstrate that better. Something that's probably smashed a bit, because I want to see if it actually, what it really does. Now, if I hover over it, it says remove a buildup of sound in the low mids. Okay, so it's just kind of 
getting rid of some of that. But as you probably noticed, the thick control, which it is saying enable additional saturation search with. Interesting, the saturation seemed to be distorting some of those lows and low mids and thickening it up a little bit in it. Not so much in the high mids, at least not for me. So I'm gonna put that on and I'm gonna actually end up doing both at the same time. So I've got the thick, so the saturation going on, which was adding some connection between the bass guitar and the low mids of other instruments. And then the clean at the same time. The thick now clearly is adding some high mid distortion, but definitely the low mids are coming forward. Yeah, again, I don't think the clean is the one to demonstrate on this song because what is happening with the thick, with those low mids distorting a little bit and thickening up, <laughs> hence the thick, it's now at a place where I like it and I put the clean on and it starts pulling it away again. I don't need to do that. All right, the multi, uh, enable multi bound compression, fix problems in specific ranges. Okay. <laughs> When it went drastic, I didn't like it at all, but using it subtly on just the mid range is quite tasty. It seems to counteract nicely with some of what's happening with the thick control, maybe distorting the high mids ever so slightly too much. Let's put the smooth back in afterwards. Now that's making some sense. So it is interesting, um, it's quite intuitive, the way they've laid it out in order actually makes some sense. Like you you would start from the left and work right with this. Like I wouldn't use the thick before I use the clean unless it's something so obvious in the low mids. Maybe we'll find that in another mix. The calm says reduces harshness and builds up lots during the in the box processing. Okay, so I use the multiband to do a little bit of the mids. So let's turn that off and put the calm on instead. Okay, so now with all that fancy stuff that's going on, you're all saying, you're all screaming at me, Warren, going, well, you know, but how much of that is volume? So let's see if we can bounce it. This is the point where I'm gonna ask you nicely to just turn up your headphones, a couple of dB, I won't speak. And now we're gonna hear the difference between the plug-in on with all these little things that we've done, but with the output brought down. So you're gonna hear more of the widening, how much limiting it's doing, and how much other kind of effects it's adding to it, you know, with the thickness of the low mids and a bit of the uh, distortion in some of that saturation, I should say, in some of those high mids as well, the smoothing effect, and then this calming effect. Right, let's just see what it all does. Here it is in bypass.
quite dramatic what it's doing. It's definitely making the high mids and the high end really, really exciting. It's taking the snare, which is kind of kind of thick and not overly bright um, and giving it a lot more snap. I think my gut is, um, and it's definitely kind of like bringing in those transits. My gut is I'm gonna do everything that I've done and just bring it down. I'm gonna reduce the widening effect I'm gonna bring down the loud ever so slightly. I'm gonna reduce the amount of boost here I've done with the calm and the thick. All this, maybe bring up the output now to match. And let's just see how this is. This happens a lot whenever I'm doing anything. Boosting EQ, compressing, adding effects. I might get something and I like it and I really start to enjoy what it's doing and then I fall in love with it and I overdo it. And then I find, I go back to the original reference and then I just find that balance of like, oh, I like what it's doing. But immediately I can tell that this plugin is going to do dramatic stuff when necessary and subtle stuff when used subtly. So I'm gonna do one more move, but I'm actually gonna bring all of these down a little bit more. Yeah, I like this widening effect. I'm not getting that dizzyingness. Is that a word? Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, let's uh, put this into bypass and let's move to a completely different song. Fancy That is an amazing song by Andy Palmer. I really love this track. So here is it in bypass. Let's take it slow. Using the same settings as before. They walk on to his pad, he's got quite the place. Says, what about you, babe? What holds your faith? She turns to him with a big side grin. I know Dr. Samba, I rake it in. Now she got one hand around the man. Can you tell I'm a meters fan? I really like what it's doing. I'm gonna back uh, back off a little bit of the width a bit, just a shade, but I do like that. I'm gonna leave the calm where it is, leave the thick where it is, lows where it is, and I'm just gonna increase the output ever so slightly and make it a bit louder. What you want, she's gonna get from you. I'm not gonna do anything with the output because the louder is doing it. This is nice. What you want, she's gonna get from you. Alright, let's rebalance the output because now everybody's screaming that that's the difference is the volume.
So it's pretty interesting. So I've got it now to a place where the guitar volume barely changes, but everything else is coming up. So the width is really nice. It's really, really helping. It's not set to massively. I mean, it's not even two times. It's set here to 1.3x, but we're getting those sides to feel just a little bit more out there. I don't usually do this. It's a new thing for me, but the guitars are remaining about the same volume, but the middle and everything else is coming up. It's feeling a little bit more punchy, I suppose. Things are just kind of like attacking a little bit more. The center is a little nicer. Yeah, I like this a lot. What you want, just gonna get from you. What you want, she gonna get from you. What you want, she's gonna get from you. Really nice, really nice. Joe Carroll is a good friend and a very trusted source. He is working constantly and consistently, seven days a week, producing, engineer, mixing, so much stuff. And when he pulled me over and said, you have to check this out, I took him seriously, and there's good reason to. It's really, really great. So last things last is I'm gonna use uh, a Little Empire track, which is really printed very heavily. So we're gonna bring it down. Put the clean on for the low mids. Really nice on this track. Pretty awesome, that was fun. I'm gonna go over to Joe Carroll now, who's gonna take you through the settings and the way he uses it. This is my first impressions. Joe has been using this for quite some time, so I'm sure he's gonna give us a little bit more insight. What's up everyone, thanks for joining us. And what we have today is a new plugin. So this has been out for a little while and I have a copy. And the thing is, I didn't really put much of any time into it other than a quick checking um, the loudness ability until Nam a few months ago. And I walked by their booth and they, hey, Joe, you know, how you doing? Come over and check this out. They showed it to me in detail and I was kind of blown away with it. Uh, honestly, I thought it was really great and something I need to put some more effort in. And so, of course, ever since then, I've been home and I've been using my template and, <laughs> and I've not put in effort. Now's the time because I think this could be, for a lot of us, this could be an answer to some prayers. You know, it's one of those things where, um, some of us are not mastering engineers, me included. So we struggle to get loudness uh, the way we want it to be perceived by our clients uh, in a way that's distortion free. And, and, you know, some limiters just fall apart, right? I mean, we all know that. You go back to something like the L1, which is a great tool, still is a great tool in many ways, but there's no doubt that we'd put that on our stereo bus. And as we would try to get our volume, things just fall apart. All right. I mean, it just absolutely falls apart. And and every tool has that point. Every tool, you know, brick wall limiter has that point where, okay, it's good. It's better. It's great. Okay. Now it's crap. <laughs> so what we're trying, you know, what we try to evolve with and, and move technology forward was how loud can we get it? And it'd still be great before it falls apart and turns to crap. And this is one of those tools. I think the the loudness portion of this thing is really special. So let me just introduce the product rather than just keep talking about it. And that is master plan here. It, it's just one of those all-in-one tools for your stereo bus, kind of your last guy in line. So we have an input trim, 
and an output trim. We'll just walk through it real quick. Uh, a bypass, you know, just just real just real basic stuff. Low frequency and um, high frequency EQ, so we can put a little extra shine on something if we want to, or if it's shiny when it comes to us, we can just do it right here from within the plug-in if we choose to. This is really what it's all about, though, right here in the middle. How loud can we push something? You know, how, how our crest factor, our luffs, you know, what what can it be before uh, it's 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 crap? <laughs> and we have a stereo widener built into it. I was just playing with it, you know, trying to familiarize myself with a little bit, uh, just a little bit before I went on camera. I want it to be fresh, uh, but I don't want to be completely stupid about it either. Uh, we have a selection of things here where we can do when we monitor it. Anything from just dimming the volume to mono, bandpass, a phone, or uh, trying to simulate something like an NS10. So that, you know, for some of us that only have one set, uh, set of speakers and we want to he hear that thing with the top and the bottom shaved off, you know, maybe this is a cool feature. I, I haven't seen that in, in any other um, master bus type um, uh, programs like this. We have a thickness, which enable, uh, we can read right here, it pops up, enable additional saturation circuit. Very cool. This clean button removes a buildup of sound in the low mid. So it's just turn that on and, and see, so you see when you engage it, you get a little pop up see that so you can you know decide how much you use it multi brings up a little eq here high low mid right and then we have a smooth button which it, it's uh well i got to keep it right here so i can read very gentle compression that smooths the overall sound you know so we can turn that off or on and that you know there's not an additional pop-up it's either engaged or it's not calm reduces harshness that builds up okay and this is when the calmness is enabled, it doubles the amount of frequencies affected by the calm. Okay, so it's, I guess it'd be like a, a Q factor. So, okay, cool. Oh, and tape. This is a cool thing too. Enable analog tape, physical modeling, uh, you know, all, all the stuff that comes with it, right? Hysteresis, head bump, blah, blah, blah. And we have metering down here. So we can change the size right here of the of the layout. I, I, you know, for the for today's program, of course, we want to see a lot of this. So we're going to make it extra large. And there's a couple extra little features here. You know, oversampling and various things that we can do. And I thought this one was kind of cool. We can we can change it to white. Um, some of us may like that look better, uh, so the knobs pop out. Uh, but I'll probably just try to keep it like this for today because i think when a lot of you see this online you come across it, it if it looks like this you know it looks like this you may think oh that's that one i, I saw the uh, the video on so we'll just keep it right here all right so i've got a song that i mixed oh gosh seven eight years ago and some of the plugins are missing now <laughs> so it's not exactly the real mix anymore and i've taken some stuff off the stereo bus too so it's a little more flat sounding i, I you know the the high frequency boost and stuff that I had to make it pretty is gone because we want to test these features. So here's the song now with this uh, uh, unengaged. Okay, cool. It's just missing all of the stuff, that, you know, all the beef and all the muscle and all the weight I had added on the stereo bus is now gone. Uh, and I was mixing through that. So now we got to try to get it back. Uh, but I think that's the best way to approach this. So let's let's just start dialing in some EQ first, okay? I'm going to go way too high just so we can hear the circuit. All right, let's put that uh, saturation circuit in and drive it. Okay, fairly significant. Okay, so that's the bottom end. Let's dial in some top end. I think on this song, the clean, we just don't need it. Um, you know, I, I've done enough carving uh, uh, in the frequencies that that I, I just don't feel like I need uh, I have a muddy buildup in there. But let's just go ahead and play with the knob. Yeah, I can hear I can definitely hear that what somewhere around 250 to 1k just a general 
gentle swoop. I don't really know where the the center and the edges are, but you, you can hear it in all those bands doing its thing. Let's not use that. Uh, the multi, um, let's just go ahead and just just play with it, just so we get you know get to, uh, familiar with it. I, I, okay, I see, I see. This is actually a multi band compression. Uh, okay, okay. So that I got it. So so we can divide the compression into three ranges. This isn't an EQ. Okay, that's very cool. I had not played with that, obviously. So uh, let's check the let's check the smooth. Uh, let's turn it on. I, 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 that, that's definitely a very gentle, very understated uh, type of compression, and and, and that. That's not a bad thing. I think that, you know, uh, think of the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor and that first step of optical compression that's only like a two to one and you just you just, just kind of want to move it around just a little bit and it, it, it just kind of it has a way of, of, of gluing and making this creaminess, uh, you know, before we hit it with the VCA and, and really, really get the attack and, and thing that we, things that we want to get. It just has this calming effect. And uh, smooth is a good word for that. So, and it, you know, we may, as we do this kind of a thing later on, we may hear more effect uh, from that, actually. But l let's leave it on for now. Um, I I'm going to hit bypass here, and let's let's hear if the EQ moves that we did are, are uh, great. Yeah, I think I think that's great. I may have went a little far because the mid seemed to seem a little uh, scooped now in comparison. So we'll we'll back that down just a little bit. But I think that's a, a good plan. All right. So reduce harshness that builds up during uh, a lot of in the box processing. Why not? Let's calm it. Let's let's see what we got. Okay, that is pretty obvious. I hear that substantial, and I I don't think it's very necessary on this song, but I definitely know I could understand where that would be applicable. Sometimes on individual tracks, um, I can think of a loop, uh, for example, on a drum uh, on a song that I just worked on two days ago that I I wish I would <laughs> I wish I would have known about this. There was this metallic upper mid range edge um, that this probably would have done a, a really good job on now let, let's let's keep it at a max level like this and hit the two times button and hear the difference okay I, 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 I yeah it's just it's just i can hear the frequencies you know it's just it's it's more of the same same thing so let's uh let's take it out listen to it again and let's let's see if we want to keep it engaged to some degree uh, to keep the uh, the the you know that that aggressive portion of the of a female voice if it, if it helps keep that at bay. I, 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 I honestly don't know that that's a bad thing on, on this song. I, I, it, you know, that may make her voice just a little bit subdued uh, in, in a way that is not bad. Uh, it may, 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 you know, get us um, when when we do engage the loud circuit. It may it may help us get even more without any kind of a distortion or or whatever. Yeah, it's not very necessary. Let's just put it around 30% just so we can say we used it, okay? Let's try the tape setting. I, 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 very substantial. Uh, that that That's like a slow, dark thing. L let's just move this around until it feels good and then take it in and out and see if we like, the, like it for this track. I can see it being very effective, uh, you know, a very effective tool to have, though, built right in. I, 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 
You know, on this song, I don't think I would use it. Uh, again, I think it's very useful. I just don't think I would use it on this song. But uh, I'm going to go really far uh, to where, you know, to me, it would be like a slow tape speed, uh, um, a dark formula, a bias turned towards the low frequency, probably, that kind of thing. Let's just take it way over there and just hear it. Again, a feature that could be really usable uh, on individual tracks, uh, for sure, or, or even group uh, group masters. So that's cool that we have it. I just don't think it's right for this song. So let's just do this. Bypass it. Bring you know. Let's listen back and forth and see what we got. Okay, I like it. I like it. It's definitely doing a thing. Uh, I feel like the EQ sounds pretty good, uh, for sure. I like this thickness. Um, you know, it's like an additional weight of transformers or whatever. I like it. Now, this is what it's all about. So I've got this stereo bus right here, and you'll be able to see right now we're probably in a really sweet spot uh, for analog, you know, around minus 18 in that ballpark. Perfect. That's where I try to have a lot of my mixes in case I interface uh, outboard and gear is where my averages are, are around analog zero and to a couple dB above, you know, two, three dB above. I can always push more into it, but I don't want to, I don't want to overdrive uh, a circuit and have um, too much analog, you know, too much ugly uh, overdrive if I don't want it. Okay. That said, this is what it's all about. So we may, what we may have to do so we may have to put a trim tool because I have a, a a second Pro Tools rig over here as a capture device. And I got a feeling this is going to be capable of being so loud that we're going to have to protect it. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Let's just watch the, between watching this meter here, because some of us, that's what we want to see. And then there's other others of us that are really happy to see um, the luffs, you know, it, integrated, the peak, the crest, all that kind of stuff. And, and that's what we need to see. And I think it's all really useful. Um, but but here we go. Okay, so I'm going to take the trim off. And I'm going to go only to about right there, just so I'm not clipping and distorting. So I want to see the meter uh, in Pro Tools without that. Let's see if we can get this balance, uh, this ratio worked out well. Am I hearing a little distortion around the edges? I am. But not not a lot, especially for as I mean, look look how hot we're getting this thing. I, 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 uh, showing me apparently that I'm I'm out of the sweet spot. I'm getting a little aggressive, but you saw how little. The meter was moving, and I was watching my capture device over here, and it was just like a hot dog. <laughs> it was that 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 LED meter was not moving, and it was still pretty doggone clean. Now, as part of a true mastering process, of course, there's other steps to make sure we can reach loudness goals. Um, whereas this, you know, we're trying to just do everything in one plugin to show its power. Uh, but that said, as part of a process to get a master loud, especially if we're not skilled mastering engineers. Uh, and I know, I, I, again, I mentioned this early, I'm not a mastering engineer. I love sending things out to a third-party mastering specialist that does that one thing and has done it for decades and is amazing at it because I know they can do it better than I do it. They can, they can, I'm that running back that'll get it to the two yard line and then they're going to come in and push it into the end zone for the score. Um, but every once in a while, we have to do our own work, right? There's not, there's not budgets. 
uh, or even just to get it sent out for approvals from a customer or to a client, uh, you know, th- these kind of things come in handy for all of us, even if we're not fully mastering our own work. Let's try that one more time, okay? That's loud. That's loud. And that's clean. One other really cool feature of this thing that I thought sounded really good was the widener. Um, you know, some people are scared of wideners. I, I am not. Uh, they've, uh, most of us are scared because at one time they weren't very good. It was a phase trick that caused problems, especially in, with mono com- compatibility. Uh, even though mono is kind of dead, it's still kind of not, depending on where you're at in a room or something like that. So that said, uh, I-, I want you guys to hear this. Okay, check it out. I- now, what I can do, and of course, you're not going to hear this, but what what I do with the stereo widener when I'm getting to know it or deciding how much of it to use. Um, I, just, I have a mono button right here. So I, if I don't trust it, I just flip it and turn the knob. I, I, and make sure that the low end of the kick drum, the attack of the snare drum, there's, there's, there's no swishy weirdness going on. And there's not. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a great widener. So that's why I wanted to bring it on the show and talk about it, introduce it to you guys a little bit. I'm impressed by it. Uh, I hope you guys are as well. Now, this is from a company called Music Hack, M-U-S-I-K, and we'll put it on the screen, M-U-S-I-K, Hack, H-A-C-K. So as good as this plugin, I- I'm not sure how many other items they may have or have coming, but as good as this is, as well laid out and as thoughtful as, as this is, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing more uh, products from this company. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and happy mixing. Mm-hmm.